Hello, uh, in this tutorial, we are doing the ECZ science paper on GCE. Uh, so, we are going straight to question one. Uh, question one, yeah, the diagram below shows part of a ruler used to find the length of a nail. What is the length of a nail? As you can see, uh, the subdivisions are in 0 0.1 centimeter, or should I just say one millimeter? So, if you look at this point, this, it is starting at one centimeter, meaning from here to here, that's one centimeter. And then from here to here, that's another centimeter. But these divisions, this is one millimeter and this is one millimeter, or we can say 0 0.1 centimeter. So these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they're in line here. So it's 2.7 centimeters. The answer is B. Uh, we go to question two. The diagram below shows a block of food of density 0 0.6 grams so the density is 0 0.6 grams 0 0.6 grams per cubic centimeter and then the volume they've given us the dimensions of the block here uh, the length the length is 10 centimeters the breadth is 5 centimeters and the height is 1 centimeter so what is the mass of the block uh, in order in order to find the mass of the block, we are going to use the, the formula for density. Density is equal to mass over volume. So first of all, we need to find the volume. The volume is equal to L, which is the length, times breadth, times height. So the volume will be 10 times 5 times 1, which will be equal to 50 cubic centimeters. Then the mass, the density is equal to mass over volume. So the mass is going to be density times volume. So the mass is equal to 0 0.6 times 50. The mass will be equal to 0 0.6 times 50, which is 30 grams. That's question three. So the answer, or that's question two. The answer is A, 30 grams. The diagram below shows of how a distance covered by a woman varies with time when she takes a walk from her home to the market. What was happening in the region A, B during the woman's walk? If you can see, this is a distance time graph. So this tells us that from O to A, the distance was increasing. And the, if the distance is increasing, then that person is moving. But from A to B, this region, the distance wasn't changing, meaning that 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 person was in constant or at a constant place, just at one point. No movement was happening. So in, in this case, the answer should be D. The woman stopped walking. Because if we say walked with a constant speed, this is not a speed time graph where you have to say this is constant speed. This is The distance is the same here. It's constant. And when the distance is constant, then the person is not moving. Uh, question four. A parachutist of mass. So the person has a mass of the parachutist. The parachutist is of mass 60 kg and then the mass of the parachute m parachute is equal to 20 kg they've given us a velocity of 5 meters per second taking g to be 10 newtons per kg what is the resultant force on the system on the whole system so it's more like this 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 person who is having the parachute Wants, wants to go down, so he he's pulling everything down. But the parachute is using is being pulled up by the air resistance. So it's more like we have a force going upwards and another force going downwards. So the force going upwards is that mass of the parachute, the new the, the force of the parachute itself. So the mass of the parachute is 20 kg times the 10 which has been given as the the, the acceleration acceleration due to gravity. So it will be. 200 newtons going upwards and then downwards we've got 60 kg going downwards and then if you multiply it by 10 to find the the force it will be 600 newtons so if you want to find the resultant fr which is the resultant force is equal to this 600 minus 200 hence the resultant force will be equal to 400 newtons so in this case the answer is going to be b so the diagram below shows a frictionless pulley used to lift an 8,000 newton block of concrete. What is the minimum effort required to raise the block? 
Uh, if we look at this whole system, they are saying it's a frictionless pulley. In other words, it's an ideal pulley system. So if the if if the system is ideal, then the efficiency is hundred percent. And if the efficiency is hundred percent, then the mechanical advantage and the ve velocity ratio are equal. Uh, but in this case, when you look at the whole system, counting the lines here gives us the velocity ratio. So one, two, three, four, the lines except this one from the effort. So one, two, three, four, meaning the velocity ratio is four. So if the velocity ratio is four, then even the mechanical advantage is four. So, but if the mechanical advantage is four, let's solve it here. The mechanical advantage, MA, is equal to load over effort. So, but we want to find the effort, the effort. So, the mechanical advantage is 4. You see? Because the efficiency is 100%. Efficiency is 100%, meaning MA over the velocity ratio, which is 4, times 100, should be equal to 100%. Then the MA will be equal to 4. So, this is 4. Is equal to, what is the load? The load is 8,000 newtons over the effort so when we cross multiply effort will be equal to 8000 over 4 which will be equal to 2000 newtons and in this case the answer is b that's the mark the, the minimum effort required to raise the block